قرارداد نفت خود را با کنسرسیون در سال 1979 یعنی شش سال دیگر دیگر به هیچ وجه همدید نفت In order to go there with the plan, the first thing I have to do is set the scene for the plan. When Jimmy Carter came into office, when Jimmy Carter came into office, because he saw the Shah of Iran as a conservative Republican ally, he took the position that this man had to go, that this was a proxy of the United States. Therefore, he did not want a strong Iran, and he looked to a man in France who, by the way, was only there four months. That's what intrigued me to write the book, Bill. I looked at Khomeini and I said, how could a refugee go to France in four months, accumulate the firepower, the money, and the resources to overthrow a country? I want yes. you to address your comment on Khomeini in Paris, and what are you saying about Jimmy Carter's role and the U.S. government's role in terms of Khomeini coming to power? Khomeini shows up in Paris from Najaf, Iraq, and he's a refugee. He come, the, uh, the president, Giscard Estrang, told me he didn't even know who he was when he arrived. I didn't know who he was. I didn't believe it, but he said he didn't know who he was. He comes into the country. The first thing we find out is almost 1,000 individuals a day, 1,000 individuals a day are coming out to a chateau west of Paris. We're finding out that terrorists are going through the airport and they're not being stopped that there's a shuttle service, and the French put in another uh, media, uh, the, another show, they usually only do two a day in short shows, but they put in another show just to cover Khomeini. Are you saying that the U.S. government was behind supporting Khomeini in Paris? U.S. government was behind supporting Khomeini in Paris, as the French were and as the British were, and it ended up in a summit in Guadeloupe, which confirmed it all. Didn't, though, the, the, the revolution in Iran happened first before Khom Khomeini was in Paris, correct? And there was, so what was the role of the U.S. there? There was already sort of a nascent movement there, was there not? Mosques, mullahs, and madrasas. It was a bizarre movement. Not bizarre, it, but the bazaars in Iran. My contacts on the ground, ambassadors I talked to, including Lebrani, the Israeli ambassador, said it was run through the mosques. Khomeini was firing the mosques with cassette tapes every week, coming out of Paris, France, and he was coordinating the, the he knew it was, listen, they were sending money into Khomeini. He was getting enormous amounts of money. He had a team of left leftists who actually believed that Khomeini was a cleric, and he was going to be good for human rights whereas he thought the Shah was a, was a Republican-loving monarch that needed to be overthrown. He deposed the Shah of Iran. He conspired through a Guadeloupe summit to overthrow the Shah of Iran. The president of France told me he was a bastard of conscience. He showed up in Guadeloupe with the, with the French and the Germans and told us. And next thing you know, the Ayatollah Khomeini comes over from France, takes over, and nothing's been the same in that region. The Shah told his wife, I fear that horror will come upon the world if he does this because I fear that the Russians will invade Afghanistan and Saddam Hussein will invade us and the radical Islamics will become an epidemic. And they did. This secret study portrays the Shah as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. So how could I be your man, your agent? How do you mean? Safeguarding your interests. Well, it says that the Shah is an uncertain ally. His dreams of glory apparently... Oh, ah, I know. So you would like me to be your stooge? The Shah of Iran has been talking about linking the price of oil to the price of world commodities. If the commodities go up, so would oil. If the commodities go down, so would oil. The Shah outlined these ideas in an interview with our correspondent, David Burrington. The Shah has no apologies for the high cost of his oil. He'd rather leave it in the ground here than sell it any cheaper. But he's deeply concerned about the growing economic crisis in the industrial countries, and he thinks the price of oil must now be stabilized. His plan is to link it to 20 or 30 basic commodities. This way, a barrel of oil would continue to buy as much for Iran as it does today. But while it might reflect inflation, it wouldn't be a basic cause of inflation.